Now let's take a look at some case studies of superstructures. The first one is soybeans daily chart. Let's say today is that day right over there. On that day, we've broken below this pivot low. Remember, we think measured moves. So once that happens, we ask ourselves, which pivot height did we just drop off of? This one right here. And prior to this low here, there was this high over there. So now that can be A, B, and C of this measured move that has just got confirmed. There's A, B, and C. Now we're looking for point D. But before we find point D, we want to see how deep the B, C retracement is. Let's do Fibonacci. From A down to B, we see that the retracement is quite deep, over 78% deep. And on that day, we also came off of this pivot high. So now we ask, how is this retracement against this move? How deep is that? Well, let's apply Fibonacci ratios. It's right at 61%. So that's not very, very deep. Plus the fact that it came down here with a gap means we may have more ways to go to the downside. Next, we check sideways time comparison at B. From here to there. Six bars versus six bars is a tie. Then we look to see what the next few bars bring. Well, now it looks like a shallower retracement. This retracement against this range is very shallow. How shallow? Let's take a look. Let's do Fibonacci retracements. From here down to here, we see that it's only 38% of a retracement. Retracements are getting shallower. It was 61% here and only 38% there. With that being the case, you might think about this move coming off of little c having a big enough move to where it may even go below that low over there. If that low were to be taken out, then we have to trace backwards to see where we might have the making of another measured move. So if and when we take out this low here, we will be coming off of this high over there. And this low here came off of this high over there. So now that would be another measured move in the making if this low gets taken out. So that would be our big measured move A, B, C, D. Let's do the Fibonacci retracements of this guy. And we see that capital C is also a very deep retracement. So if and when price action were to break below capital B, we're looking at possibly finding point D of this measured move. And the question is, where's point D? Because we're going to try to buy it at point D. Remember, capital C is a very deep retracement. Little a, b, c, d is a move within a move. Little a, b, c, d is a little move coming off of capital C. So now let's put on measure move extensions on the big capital A, b, c, d formation going from capital A down to B, drag it up to capital C. Now you can see that the 61% and the 78% extensions do not qualify as extensions. And the first extension right below B is the 100% measure move extension of the capital A, B, C, D formation. This is the dominant measure moves 100% area. Now we're looking for the measure move within the measure move, the little a, b, c, d, and see how that may extend into this area as well. We're going to use measure move extensions. Click once at little a, down to b, up to c. Here you can see that the only one that comes close would be the 161% measure move extension. Now remember, little a, b, c, d here is the supporting measure move. That one is oversold at the 161 
percent area, which happens to be supporting the bigger dominant measure moves 100 percent extension area. So now you have two numbers to work with. Now if we call this low point X down over here, then we have this range X to A in which point D may be a retracement against. So let's do Fibonacci retracement and see where we are in relationship with the other two calculations. I'll drag it from X up to A. And you can see that the 78% retracement area is very close to the other two calculations as well. So that's the area where you might find some support. Now let's take a look at this move coming off of little c. It is two measured moves back to back with the second one retracing shallower than the first one like we mentioned before 38 percent versus 61 percent. So now this one may be accelerating a little bit. So now we can do time range analysis just to check. We're going to compare this time range versus this one. Three days versus two is getting narrower. And of course two days is much narrower than this time range. So you do have narrowing time range as we're dropping. On that day it fell below capital B with a gap which means pretty strong downward formation. This is a shallow retracement against this range. So now we need to look at this particular range and maybe extend it down 2.618 because of that gap. So let's do single sided Fibonacci extension from here to here and there is the 2.618 single sided extension right here. And these three other numbers are up here. So right around here, around the average, that would be a good superstructure buy. And of course it went up about 30, 40 cents pretty much bar to bar with a gap. This is an excellent superstructure buy because the dominant measure move has a very deep retracement that we're coming off of. Also the supporting measure move within the measure move shows a very deep retracement as well. And this smaller ABCD measure move has an over sold extension at the 1.618. You also have this smaller supporting range extending down 2.618 extreme single sided extension. Overall this entire formation is a sideways formation. So we can pick bottoms when everything is in good alignment. Price extension off of deep retracing point C measure moves and also time range comparison getting narrower on its way down to our buy area. Let's have another quick look at the Fibonacci numbers. Here we see the 78 percent retracement off of XA. This is the 100 percent measure move extension of the dominant measure move. This is the one in control. Here I'm highlighting the 161 measure move extension of the supporting measure move, little a, b, c, d. And finally, there in red is the 261 extreme single sided extension of that little range over there. All these numbers come together where you can average them and put a buy order to go long. Here's case study number two, the July wheat weekly chart. We had a brief look at this particular chart in the double bottom chapter. Let's take a closer look at that particular bar. It broke above two pivot highs, this one and this one. This high is the high of a double bottom. Once it breaks this high, you have to ask yourself, could that be a point C? If that's so, then that would be B 
and then this would be point A of a measured move. So here's your big measured move in the making. A up to B, down to C, and then we ask where's point D? Remember, point D is a shortable high if the BC retracement is deep. So let's take a quick look using Fibonacci. Going from A up to B, we see that point C is a little bit deeper than 61%, but not quite the 78%. If we're going to short point D, we want to see it coming off of a deep retracement at C. Deep meaning 78% ideally, but 61% would be okay if we have supporting structures. Now we look at this double bottom off of point C as our supporting structure. But first, we have to look at the measure move extension off of this ABCD dominant structure. Now let's use measure move extensions to see just how far up above B we may be thinking about shorting. So using measured move extensions, we go from A up to B down to C. Remember, the C low has two lows exactly at the same tick. Looking at this measured move extension, we quickly see that the 618 does not qualify. It is not higher than point B. And we see that this particular bar has reached the 78% in one fast gallop. Now that is too strong. That one bar confirms the double bottom and this measure move above capital B. So even though we hit the 78%, we may not want to short it right there. So now we go up further. We focus on the 100% measure move extension of this dominant measured move. Here we look to the double bottom, as mentioned earlier, to see what kind of support it may lend. Let's use Fibonacci extensions. To apply Fibonacci to a double bottom, we first click to the high in between and down to the lowest low. And then here are the three calculations. Now because of that huge bar, we want to think extreme. And that means focusing in on the 2.618 double bottom extension. That is the furthermost extension. This gives us two numbers that are close to each other. Now let's do time range comparisons. If we're to compare this time range with this one, it's wider. But if we're going to compare this time range with this one, it is narrower. This one is the appropriate one. Why? Because we are already focusing in on the dominant measured move, which is this one. And that does not include this time range anymore. So the time ranges are in alignment for us to short up there at point D. But here we only have two Fibonacci ratios. We should really get three. So let's take a quick look down to the daily chart of the same wheat market just to see how things are behaving as we get closer to these two Fibonacci numbers. Here is the daily chart and you can see the double bottom here with the high in the middle there. Let's focus in on time ranges right here and there. Three bars versus two bars. The time ranges are getting narrower, which is good, which is supportive of a short around this area. Let's see if we can find one more Fibonacci ratio. Let's focus in on this particular range right here. Since that's associated with the wider time range, and therefore it's deemed a little bit more dominant than the one that is two bars wide. Let's apply single-sided Fibonacci extensions. Here you see the 261 single-sided extension using this range right here. Now we're using this extreme extension because price action is coming off of this pretty strong move. So we got to use the extreme and in this case we lean on the 2.618 to give us a third Fibonacci 
calculation. The average of those three Fibonacci ratios gives us 431.09 mathematically. Actual high came in at 433 even. Here you have a superstructure shorting opportunity right here. Everything is lined up. Price, time, and even formations on a lower time interval chart. After you're short, of course, you can expect a downward move. And here you have measure moves back to back. And as you can tell, retracement here somewhat deep, got a little shallower, time range about even, and you can take profits around there. Let's go back to the weekly chart. This whole formation was a setup to short at point D. Now let's talk about placing a protective stop loss and profit taking. We want to focus in on this A to D move. This is the whole move that is in consideration. Now we're going to look at this A D move like we did earlier in the G to H move. The question to ask is what we did earlier in that section. How strong is this move going up? We'll focus in on this retracement, which of course was a 61% retracement as shown earlier. So profit taking around here should be approximately a 61% drop from H against the GH range. So let's apply Fibonacci from G up to H. A super conservative place to take profits would be around the 38% level. This one can be expected to go down to the 61% level. That's where I suggest you to take profits. But notice how it did not reach the 78%. So a medium ground would be the 61% area. That's where you should be focusing in on to take profits because of this retracement being 61% itself. Now again, it can go a lot lower but don't bank on it. Be conservative. So here you get about a 65 cent drop, about $3,200 in profits. So how do I place a stop loss? Well, with such a good superstructure formation, we said earlier that we can expect at least a 38% drop. What I do is I take a third of that and use that as the amount that I'll be risking. In other words, take this amount here. In this case, it was a 41 cent move down to the minimum 382 level. So you can take a third of that and use about a 12 cent leeway for your stop loss. In other words, add 12 cents to where you got in on the short side. But as you can see, it only went against us about 2 cents. So you can actually go a lot tighter than that when a superstructure shows up with all the alignments in good place, time and price. So if your stop is one third of that 41 cent move, which is up there, your reward to risk ratio is still about three to one. Even if you were to take profit at the very, very first level. But as we mentioned earlier, because of this somewhat deep retracement down here, you may be able to take profits down here at the 61% level. That would give you a 5 to 1 reward to risk ratio. Case study number 3, E-mini S&P daily. Here you see a double top. The second high is slightly higher than the first. And there's the confirmation point in between. Next, we check the time range of this double top right here. Now, if there are no time ranges following this one on its way down that is wider, then this double top here will be the structure in control. In other words, that would be the dominant structure in which other structures will be supporting. And we see that this time range 
is the same size as the one associated with the double top at best because this one is associated with an outside bar. So that's the semi-pivot low only. In any case, we do not see any other time ranges all the way down. So this double top is the dominant structure. Now I'm going to do extensions off of that particular range. Here you can see that this huge down bar reaches the 261% extension area in one big thrust. So do not try to step in and buy it there. Even though that's hitting an extreme 2.618 extension off the double top. Instead, look to see how price action makes its way down to the super extreme 3.618 area. We can see that before it gets down there, there were bars that are stacked on top of each other. That means a slowing down process is underway. It's as if it's easing its way down to that area. Now, if you're thinking about stepping in and buying, that is a very good sign. Now we need to focus in on this particular area. So let's look to the intraday charts. Let's look at the 15 minute chart to see how price action actually eases its way down to where we may find a buying opportunity that is safe. Here's that 15 minute chart of that S&P. You can see that the 361 super extension off of that dominant double top is down here. It is pre-calculated at 1232.11. Now, if we weren't paying attention to the fact that we are working our way down towards the super extreme 3.618 area, then we might think, hey, here is a time range and now we're getting wider. And this retracement here is somewhat shallow. It's right at about 38% only. Do we really want to buy down here? Well, let's have a closer look. Keep in mind that T2 is still narrower than the time range associated with the dominant structure, the double top. Remember, back on the daily chart, there was no other time range wider than the one up there with the double top. So even though T2 is wider than T1, first we need to compare that to the dominant structure, which again is the double top. And secondly, this time range is not formed with a straight thrust move. In other words, here, G to H is not a very strong move, as shown by the examples back in Chapter 2, the measured move. Let's take a closer look. I'm going to open it up further. Here you can see this particular bar breaking below this low here. That confirms a measured move. On this particular chart, we can use this one as a somewhat dominant move because now we're looking for additional structures, supporting structures coming off of point C down to point D. But let's first see how deep the retracement at C is. You can see that point C is beyond the 78% we might be able to call this a double top. Point C is close to point A, although not quite as high. If we see this as a double top, then the reference range will be from B up to A. So I'm going to click once at B and extend up to that dotted line. So now this double top is somewhat dominant from this perspective. And let's see what comes off of point C. Now things coming off of point C or the second top will be supporting structures. Off of point C, we see this 
measure move here. Let's do measured move extensions off of C. This retracement right here isn't very deep, so we're not going to use the 78%. We're going to lean on the 100% measure move extension. We also see that we have a little minor double top right here, with the second high being higher than the first. So now we're going to extend down off of that blue range right there using double top extensions. Now we're going to use the extreme 2.618. Why? Because we like extremes. We want to make sure there is some element of extreme going off of the supporting structure which is the CD move. Because this CD move is coming down in support of this double top structure. So here I cleared off the other calculations and only left in the 261 double top extension coming off of this double top here. It's a small supporting double top. Now let's compare time ranges. If we're going to call this T1, this is T2. T2 is narrower than T1, which is very good. We like to see things getting narrower if we're going to think about buying at some sort of low. Finally, you may also take this range here and extend down single-sided just to see what you get. Remember, single-sided calculations are to be used as guides only. Let's go over everything again in terms of these Fibonacci calculations. First off, you have this calculation that is the extreme, extreme 3.618 off of the controlling dominant double top from the daily chart. This one is set. This is the one that other calculations need to come in towards. Then you have this calculation right here. This is the 1.618 extension off of a double top. And this double top is the C and A double top right here. Then we have this calculation right here in red. This is the 100% of the supporting structure. In this case, a supporting measure move off of point C. Now, why do we use the 100%? Because of the shallow retracement right here. We need to use at least the 100%. Then we have this little supporting double top coming off of this C to D move. With this supporting double top, the second high is a little bit higher than the first. So now we extend down. And when we do that, we choose the extreme 2.618 double top extension. Now this extreme 2.618, in a sense, would keep the 100% measure move extension coming off of CD to be somewhat honest. That extreme calculation in there really helps. You need an extreme element in there. Finally, we can also address this particular range going up to A. The single-sided extension comes in right around there, right around the same neighborhood. But again, do not put too much weight on the single-sided extensions. Here I put all the Fibonacci calculations in green. They all cluster right around this neighborhood to give you an excellent buy when you average out these numbers. And the actual low is right there. And of course, a big, huge up move follows. Case study number four. Now let's look at a stock chart. This is the daily Google chart. Let's focus in on that particular bar. It breaks above this high right here. It also breaks above this high here. Now let's analyze all the different 
ramifications of that breakout. First, we'll look at sideways time range comparison. If we're going to compare sideways, it got narrower. But once you break above this high here, you can do time range comparison in a series. This one is wider than this one or that one. So now that's looking pretty good to the long side. Now you can look at retracements. How is this retracement? In other words, how deep is that retracement that we're coming off of to do that breakout? It looks like it's between 38 and 61 percent. So when this bar breaks above two pivot highs, this one and this one, time range comparison shows narrower sideways. Number two, time range comparison shows wider in a series. And number three, the retracement associated with the breakout bar is somewhat shallow. It is not even 61% deep. So if you're faced with this dilemma of whether to go and trade the breakout to the long side and buy it once it breaks above this high here. In other words, on this day, should you buy on the breakout? Well, let's see if there are more clues. Now let's take a look at this retracement against this range here. It happens to be right at 61.8 percent. Now let's take a look at this previous retracement right here against this thrust here. It's actually real close to the 78.6 percent. So the retracements are getting shallower as back-to-back -back measure moves start to form. And that's happening as time ranges get wider as shown by number two. So number four, you have retracement getting shallower with wider time range. And that's happening right around here. This is almost like an improved strategy number two as shown in chapter two because now you're factoring in the time range as the retracement gets shallower the second time around. So let's recap. Number one, time range comparison getting narrower. This is not too good. Time range comparison getting wider in the series. This is good. Retracement getting shallower right at impact. This is good. Number four, retracement shallower with wider time range. Very good. So this shows that it's three against one. Now remember, sideways comparison is really not that crucial once you have a comparison in a series taken over. So all in all, this would be an excellent place to go long right around here on this bar as it breaks above this high because of all these reasons. And after you get in, you can trail your stop from one tick below here to all the pivot lows that come after that. And they all go higher than the previous one. This is the widest time range. This is one of the reasons why you buy to go long here. Now, let's draw in the dominant measured move. The question is, where should point D be? Where do we get out of this trade? First, we'll look at the retracement of BC against AB. It's between 38% and 61%. In fact, it's right at 50%. So we'll call that shallow. As it trades up from C, we see that time ranges also get created 
where we see that this T2 is wider than T1. So far, so good. And this retracement here is shallow against this. So right here, we can expect more move to the upside. As we hold on to this long trade, as price action goes higher and higher, we need to figure out where we are in terms of measure move extensions. So let me put on a measure move extension from A, B, dragging it down to C. Here, this huge bar that is associated with this shallow retracement and the wider time range has blasted above the 100% measure move extension. So we're not going to worry about that level. Now, let's take a look at this level here, the 127% measure move extension. This level is where it gets a little bit overbought. But let's see if there's reasons to get out. Now, let's do a single-sided extension off of this range, BC. We want to look at the extreme. And the extreme means the 261% extension, single-sided. As you can see, the 261.8 single-sided extension is very close to the 127% area, right about there. Whenever you have an extreme 2.618 single-sided extension close to one of the measure move extensions, especially something that is more than a 100%, pay attention. The end may be near. But let's look for more clues. Now let's focus in on this little range right here. Let's do single-sided extension off of that. Now we're going to focus in on the extreme. Remember, this is a supporting structure to support the dominant measure move, capital A, B, C, D. So when this little supporting structure also gives you an extreme calculation, again, 2.618, close to the other two calculations off of the dominant bigger formation, then that's a telltale sign to be careful if you're still holding long positions. Now let me gray it out so you can see price action as price action moves up to that high. Remember, whenever we see price action thrust strongly into the 2.618 area, bar to bar, it may or may not stop there. It may even go to the 3.618 super extreme extension. But what we see here is something more. It makes a little small formation right over there. And over there, it forms a time range that is actually narrower than this one. So right around here, there are three Fibonacci extensions and time range alignment telling you to get out of your long position. In fact, this is telling you to go short. This is really a superstructure cell. Let's review. Here in red is the 1.27 measure move extension. Now that is more than the 100%, which is good. It is the one that's a little bit further out. Here you see the 2.618 single-sided extension. This happens to fall right on top of the other calculation, the 1.27 measure move extension. This is the extreme. But this extreme does not get reached in one fast move. It actually worked its way up somewhat, which is good if you're thinking about going short. Why? Because if it actually had gone up there bar to bar, you might need to consider the extreme, extreme 3.618 single-sided extension. And finally, this little formation here also lends a helping hand. That's a supporting structure to give another extreme 2.618 single-sided extension. When you combine that with a narrower time range right about here, which is narrower than this time range here, which is narrower than this time range over here, then that is not just a good place to get out of your long, but is an excellent place to go short. How big of a drop can you expect? Well, the conservative play is to take profits at the 38% level. 
if you see price action giving you a strong downward formation, you may hang in there until the 61% is hit. In this particular situation, as price action falls from this high here, this is the first real pivot high that gets formed. The rest are just inside bars and outside bars. That shows a pretty good strong downward move. So there are some very compelling reasons to go long over there and sell there or even go short at point D. Well, how about this move down here? Let's take a quick look to see where D is in reference to that range over there. Let me draw in Fibonacci retracements from this high up there down to this low at A. Even though we use retracements as guides only, the 78.6% is the furthermost extreme of the three retracements. It seems as if price action at point D came halfway up to the 78% retracement area as if to accommodate that before dropping. So you can even average in the 78% to really catch the high of D if you're going short. This retracement here at C is somewhat shallow. To be really conservative, that retracement really ought to be deep, 61% or maybe even 78%. Case study number five, the June Canadian dollar weekly chart. Now let's focus on that particular bar there. Why? Because it breaks above this pivot high. Let me review. First, you need to think measured moves. And the making of a measured move comes into focus when price breaks above a pivot high or low. That's confirmation of the measured move. And measured move is the structure which we get the superstructure from. Next, you locate the dominant structure. Usually it is the dominant measured move, but it can also be a dominant double top or bottom. And you can tell that it is dominant because of the widest time range. You then check the retracement at pivot C of the dominant measure move. Is it deep? Is it shallow? Finally, observe supporting structures. What you're looking for here is price and time alignment. How are the retracements? Are they getting deeper or shallower? How are the time range comparisons? Are they getting narrower or wider? When everything aligns properly, a dominant structure turns into a superstructure. A superstructure setup gives you the most predictable part of the market. And the best news is, with a little bit of going over these videos and practicing, you will very quickly be able to locate and identify these superstructure setups in advance. All right, let's get back to this case study. I was talking about this particular bar breaking above this high here. And when that happens, you have the widest time range here compared to previous time ranges. Now you know that the dominant measured move wraps itself around the pivots associated with the widest time range. Now, because of this move going from C all the way up and above B being bar to bar, would you go long here? Would you buy it on a breakout? Well, let's check the retracement of point C. We'll first go from A up to B. It's right about the 38% area, so it is shallow. But here, price goes off of point C, which is a lower pivot low. So when you're moving up from a lower low to a higher high, that's a little bit iffy. You're coming off of a compromised low. 
I'm not saying it won't work, but definitely you need to place your stop loss one tick below there. Let's say you decide not to go long when that bar breaks above B. Instead, you watch and you see a bar to bar, lower high, lower low. Now this becomes point D for the time being. If point A is lower than previous lows, and the BC retracement is shallow against AB, and the CD move is less than AB, then you have the making of the measured move strategy number one, which is to buy on pullback after a strong trend is witnessed. In the very raw form, you will be buying when price pivots above this high here, which means you'll be buying on that bar on its way up. That entry would get you stopped out right here when it moves below that pivot low. But let's do strategy number one with Fibonacci ratios. That setup says to use 38% of the AD move and 78% of the CD move. And take the average. Let's take a closer look. None of these lows have hit the average of these two calculations yet, so it would not be a good idea to buy on any breakouts here. And it's very, very reasonable to think about a pullback to these calculations, especially when you are coming off of a lower pivot low as mentioned earlier. So you should not put on a trade under these circumstances. When this higher high comes in, it now becomes our new point D. And we try again to buy it per those Fibonacci ratios. 38% of AD and 78% of CD. After price starts moving down from D bar to bar, we wait for price to come lower before going higher. But as you can tell, from the drop of that particular pivot high that we now call D, price doesn't hit those averages. Instead, it makes a higher high. So now this becomes a point D, our new point D. So we'll try again. We're trying again because C to D is still less than A to B. So here is the 38% of A, D, and 78% of C, D. This time price does drop and gets you filled. So that really would be a very, very good place to buy, not only because the Fibonacci ratios are close to each other, but you're coming off of a higher high. And comparing time ranges, this one is wider than that one. The second time around is narrower. Even though this is technically not really a clean time range, it is narrower than this one over here. So right here is an excellent buy. In fact, this is the improved strategy number one, and that is a superstructure setup. It is an excellent place to buy. The idea is for you to pre-calculate this area here, the average of those two numbers, as soon as this bar gets formed. Right around there, you can recognize a possible buy. Now keep in mind that this is a weekly chart. So each bar is one week. Here, it takes about five, six weeks to make about five, six thousand dollars straight up. And again, this is the dominant measure move that we go by. Now let's focus in on this time range again. It's the widest one. Now here we have to actually compare to other time ranges to give us confidence that that is the dominant measure moves point B. But there's also an easier way. Let's convert this into a monthly chart and take a quick peek. Now here is the monthly chart. This is a huge formation. Here you can see that this 
is not just the widest time range, it is the only time range going up from A. And this is a huge formation taking over a year to form. And here is that setup, that buy area right here. So this allows you to filter out all of the excess smaller pivots associated with the narrower time ranges to just focus in on the dominant structure, which is this dominant measured move. And there is the buying opportunity shown on the monthly chart. OK, let's take a look at a sensible place to take profits if you're long right there. Let's focus in on that high there. In fact, from that high down to A is that range there. That seems to be the dominant formation here because it has the widest time range compared to this one. So now let's do single-sided extension up. Here we see the three single-sided extensions. The 1.27, 1.618, point B reacted to that. And the next one up from B is the 2.618 single-sided extreme calculation. Let's see if there are other things supporting it. Earlier we checked the retracement at C and it comes in at 38%, right on the nose. Point C is shallow. Now let's draw in measure move extensions from A up to B down to C. Because point C is a shallow retracement, we're not going to pay attention to the 61% measure move extension level. And we're not going to even worry about the 78% measure move extension level unless there are compelling reasons. Here we see that the 100% is very close to the dominant structure's 2.618 area. That's very interesting. Now let's do single-sided extension off of the BC range. It also extends right up there around the same neighborhood. This is very interesting. Now we have three numbers all falling into that particular area, two of which are very extreme, 2.618 single-sided extensions. So you must take profits there. In fact, you might even think about going short up there. Now let's go back to the weekly chart, leaving those calculations up there. Remember, this CD range now becomes our new little AB move. There's the little b to little c retracement and the little c d reaction move. This little a b c d is a back to back measured move supportive of the capital A B C D move. And the capital A B C D measured move is supportive of this particular range. This particular range over here is the really dominant one which has this particular extreme calculation sitting there for all other measure move extensions to extend into. Now finally let's draw in the measure move extension of this little ABCD. I'm going to click once at A up to B and I'm going to drag it down to C. Here we see the 1.27 measure move extension of this little ABCD unfolding right in the same neighborhood. Amazing. That's where the buck stops. That's where a good place to not only get out of your long position that you bought over here, but you need to consider going short. So you can buy here to go up and then short to go down. So we have four Fibonacci extensions clustering, two of which are very extreme, 2.618. Now let's do a quick check on time range comparisons. Here we see a tiny little time range getting formed up here near D. Now that one is narrower than this one, which is narrower than this one, which is narrower than this one. So you also see four time ranges in a series getting narrower on its way up. 
and the drop from point D can be expected to be about 38 percent which is around this level here. Why do I say that? Because this dominant measure move is not a very deep retracement. Remember, it's 38 percent only. Now let me put on those Fibonacci retracement buy levels again. There's the 38 percent and now I'm going to put on the 78 percent. Now let's take a closer look around here down at the lower time interval chart, the daily chart. Remember, this is a weekly chart. Here's that same June Canadian dollar chart down at the daily level. So we've looked at the weekly, we went up to the monthly, now we're going down to the daily chart. Again, adjusting time intervals would really give you a much better look as to where you are. Here we see a big drop from B and there's a shallow retracement before settling down at the pre-calculated areas. Now, even though it comes off of a shallow retracement, this formation does not go very far. Partially because of time ranges getting narrower. And you also have a lot of these bars stacked on top of each other, which means the brakes are being applied. It is not falling down very, very quickly. Again, that is a good sign because that motion is an indication of price action dropping softly and gently to those pre-calculated numbers before taking off. Now these two calculations off of the weekly chart average out to 0.85186. Actual low comes in at 85.13 and it takes off with a shallow retracement before zooming up about five or six thousand dollars.